Greetings, health scholars, and welcome back to the For Health Scholars channel. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. My name is Dr. Arubasa, and on this channel, I show current and aspiring healthcare professionals how to, one, quickly and successfully earn their degrees, and two, how to start building and enjoy profitable careers within the business side of the healthcare industry. Now, today marks day 16 of a series that I'm calling Career Miss. This is the final video of this series, but I um, thus far, I have really been enjoying this experience, and I just want to take this moment to thank each and every one of you for joining me in the Career Miss series, whether you came on live with me to ask your questions, or if you've been sending me messages, just really thanking me for hosting this series. I really appreciate you. Your messages don't go unnoticed, and it really warms my heart to know that you guys are loving this community that I'm building. So as we conclude this year and enter the new year, I really just want to send a big thank you to each and every one of you. I am rooting for your academic career and productivity success. And today we are going to talk about how to just position yourself to get hired in the upcoming year. And so I want to end this series with giving you a bit of advice with the hopes that it really helps you position yourself to win in the upcoming year and whatever winning means to you, whether it is graduating from your school in a healthcare given program or to landing a healthcare job, I really am rooting for you to win. And I hope today's advice video. It's just giving you some advice on how to position yourself to get to the bag in the healthcare space in the upcoming year, as well as giving yourself the gift of getting a healthcare job. But before we jump into today's video, here is a few words from our sponsor. Greetings, health scholars. Today's episode is sponsored by my course, which is titled From Healthcare Graduate to Hire. Now, let me ask you a few questions. Are you a professional looking to work in the healthcare industry? Or are you a current healthcare professional looking to pivot within the healthcare industry? If you just answered yes to one of the two questions I just asked, guess what? This course is right for you, and here's why. The For Healthcare Graduate to Hire course is a video program dedicated to giving you a detailed strategy and actionable steps for implementation that will take you from healthcare graduate to job seeker to hired. In addition, in this course, I'll be sharing my stories and the different job opportunities that I've had and how I landed those jobs, as well as giving you access to the top strategies I have provided over 100 plus professionals that have helped them either land their first, next, or dream healthcare job. Now, what can you expect from the course? Well, let's have a look inside. In this course, you'll get access to a variety of video modules, and the first one is really prepping you for your job hunting process. In the job hunting process, we're going to talk about a strategy that everyone needs because strategy is key in helping you get hired. In addition, I'm going to go over some of the essential documents that you need to help you in the job hunting process to grab the attention of hiring managers. And it's not just your resume and cover letter. We're also going to show you how to prepare for the interview and how to transition from different industries into the healthcare field. We'll also talk about networking and how to connect with recruiters, which leads me to some of the course bonuses that I'll be giving out in this course. So the first bonus is that you'll get access to an exclusive recruiter directory in which you have the name and contact information of different recruiters that you can connect one-on-one -on -one and work with them which can help you in your job hunting process. Another course bonus is that you'll get access to the For Health Scholars job board and which will be hosting and featuring jobs that are hiring like right now. Also, each month, you can go live with me via the monthly live Q&A sessions in which you can ask questions that you may have about the course or about just your job hunting process and how to get hired quickly because getting hired is the name of the game. So the course is now open. I encourage you to register today. I am running a very special promo, okay, in efforts to get you hired. Tis the season to get in paid. So once again, thank you for watching today's video. And until next time. Cheers to getting hired. All right, so we are back. And as I stated, today's video is giving you some advice to help you get to the healthcare bag in the upcoming year. And I really hope that you take this advice and you apply it because I really want you, for those of you who are looking for healthcare jobs, 
or looking to pivot within the healthcare career to achieve that goal. So without further ado, let's jump into the conversation for today. So the first tip that I'm going to give you is for you to prepare your career plan. Do you know how many professionals I talk to who express to me that they're looking for a job in the healthcare space, but when I ask them this specific question, what is your career plan? They have no clue or they're like, I'm not sure. And I'm here to tell you planning is important, especially in this career trajectory of becoming Becoming a healthcare professional, or even better yet, becoming a healthcare leader. You have to know the journey and plan for the journey that is coming before you, before you can just acquire the job. Now, it doesn't always work out like our plan, but I'm telling you, having your thoughts written down on paper and exactly where you see yourself and what type of role that you see yourself working in is very important. And so if you were to make a career plan today, here are some things to include in your plan. The first thing I want you to include in your career plan is things that are going to help you adopt a healthcare leader mindset. Because to operate in the space of healthcare, particularly in the business side of healthcare, you have to have a leader mindset. You have to be a person who says, you know what, I'm rooting for the healthcare industry. And with my expertise and my skill sets, it's really going to help the healthcare industry move forward in the capacity of how I work in my role at my job. And you have to put it in your mind that, yes, I am going to acquire a job. And getting a job in the healthcare space, I'm not going to demean it and say that it's easy because at times it's not always easy. It does present a challenge, but there is a specific strategy that once you implement that strategy, it will really increase your chance monumentously to land a healthcare job. But the first thing you have to really do is position yourself and position your mindset that yes, I am going to get hired at the end of this year or in the upcoming new year, which is in 2023, or if you're watching this in 2023, it's 2024 and beyond. You have to adopt a career and really a leadership mindset. Once you've gotten to that space, you're like, okay, I am going to get the job. The next thing that I want you to do to include on your plan is determine the targeted job position that you want to work in. And this advice is really for my healthcare management and administration and public health professionals. We know that the world of healthcare administration, it is multifaceted and it's highly diverse. And when you come and you say, okay, I want a healthcare administration job, my question to you is, okay, what part of the healthcare administration field do you want to work in? Do you want to work in the finance side? Do you want to work in program management side? Do you want to work on the practice management side? Do you not even want to work with people? So you have to map out what area of the business side of healthcare that you want to work in, in order to make sure that you, when you're creating your goals, that you are creating your goals in alignment to the main goal, which is to work in a given role within the healthcare space. And then after you have determined and identified the targeted job positions that you would like to apply for, set up a system for you to apply to these jobs. And if you watch the first video of the series, I gave you a strategy that you can implement really quickly to help you get hired quickly. But also I have a course that I am launching January 7, 2023, in which it is there to teach you how to get hired. I'm not giving you any type of gimmick, any type of sales tactic. I'm really just giving you my advice and the things that I have done for myself, as well as for other professionals to help them get a healthcare job, particularly a job in the healthcare management administration and public health space. And so I encourage you to sign up for the course. The link is in the description box, but I am going to give you the exact strategy. No fluff, no um, buff, just the exact strategy that you can implement with the goal to get you hired quickly. But if you don't take the course and you're just like, okay, I'm depending on this video, really create a system on how you're going to apply for jobs in the new year. Right now, because it's the Christmas season and holiday People are on break. Like hire managers are out of the office. Nobody's looking to hire anybody right now. However, the most times that people get hired, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, is in January. And so you now, as you're on break or you have some time off, start planning out and creating your system on how you're going to apply for jobs in the upcoming year if this is right for you, if that's what you're looking to do. Or if you're looking to pivot and transition into another sector, or you're up for a job that is being open and you would like to apply for it, can create a system around that. 
Now, after you create your system, the next tip I would give you is to determine how you intend to expand your skills. One thing about the healthcare industry, you always have to be learning. This is not an industry where advice that you received 10 years ago is still applies today. Absolutely not. The healthcare industry is always growing forward. It is always moving forward. There's so many changes and you need to keep abreast of that. You That's how you give yourself a competitive advantage by being always abreast on what's happening in healthcare, whether you're working in a healthcare facility or just reading different articles, being in digital spaces that ha- are having candid conversations about the state of healthcare today. All of that information will help you. I can't tell you how many times that I've been in an interview. And in the interview, they asked me a question as it relates to nothing about the organization, but about the current or state of healthcare and how, if I was hired, how would I solve that problem? So it's very important for you to be abreast of what's happening in the industry. And then the next tip I would give you is to get your job hunting documents ready. If you stay ready, you never have to get ready. And I truly believe in that. But I believe in this to a certain extent. I believe that, yes, you should have your resume and cover letter updated. But if you watch my video on how to write a hiring manager approved resume and my other video on how to land a healthcare administration job, you have to have an edible resume at hand and an edible cover letter at hand because you need to customize it according to the jobs that you are applying for, but at least have the document easily available so that you can customize because strategy is the name of the game when it comes to getting hired in the healthcare space. And so after you created your career plan, the next tip I would give you to help you get hired in the upcoming year is to create or update your digital presence. I would tell you in my life, I have been fortunate enough that many opportunities that have come my way was through having a digital presence, being a place where people can find me, a place where people can learn who I am as a professional. My digital footprint it has a, a variety of things, but I have used those things to really help me land fellowships, to help me win grants, to get jobs, to land contracts. And so it's very important that you, in this time where you're planning out your career, that you also create or update your digital presence. And I don't mean that you have to be in all social medias, but LinkedIn is a place where you need to be. Connecting on YouTube comments is another place where you need to be. Uh, Being at conferences and attending different symposiums where the key speakers are hiring managers and people who you want to know, those are the places that you need to be because you need to network and helping you land a job in the healthcare space in 2022 and beyond. It's not just about, oh, I'm applying, I'm applying. Most of the time, your resume does not get past the applicant tracking system. And so cultivating those relationships, working with certain people, getting word of mouth referrals and, and, and you know, using that information to help you get hired comes so much easier when you have a digital presence. And I'm not telling you to go buy a website, but you could if you wanted to and design that website so that people know who you are. But use the free stuff. Use LinkedIn. LinkedIn is free. You don't even have to pay for it. But just share tad bits of information and knowledge, repost other people's stuff, connect and engage with people. And um, I'm sharing this advice with you because this is some things that I had to do and still have to do to get things done, especially as a professor, when I'm looking for people to come speak in my courses, nine out of 10 times, I don't really know these people, <laughs> you know, I, I be, but I've networked with them. I cultivate relationships with them so that we do get to know each other in a professional space that I'm like, okay, you will be a great fit in my classroom. And then that translates into, okay, but you, I can help you as well. And I can use your skills as well. Or I had this position that come across my desk. So in this day and age, it's important for you to have some type of digital presence online. And like I said, you don't have to get a website, but you can establish a LinkedIn page and just make a goal to be on there one one to two days per week, connecting with people, having conversation, facilitating conversation. All of this will help you get a job in the upcoming year. And then The next tip I would give you is to acquire professional career services and or mentorship. I find that sometimes we have to hire help and there's nothing wrong with that. 
It's nothing wrong with having a certified resume writer review your resume and help you fix your resume. It's nothing wrong with asking someone to mentor you who's in the space that you want to be. There's nothing wrong with that. Actually, it is commendable that you are a person who would ask for such help or acquire such help because that is positioning yourself to get hired quickly. But hiring someone like a professional certified resume writer or even taking a course like the course that I have from healthcare graduate to hire, that's showing you how to go from using your education that you acquired from your academic training and being a job seeker and leveraging that information to get hired. But even mentorship, like that's very important. I've had a few mentors throughout my career trajectory. And I will tell you, having someone who you can exchange ideas and have conversations about uh, where you are in your career path can also help you get into the door to the next job that is for you. So don't be afraid to acquire professional career services. Don't be afraid to work with a, a recruiter. Don't be afraid to ask for mentorship. And when I say ask for mentorship, you know, reaching out to people and know that sometimes the mentorship is not a free mentorship. Some because people value their time. Most deals that I have learned in my career, especially as a business owner, most deals happen through conversation and not conversation in organized settings, but conversations like the elevator, hence the elevator pitch. Conversations of, oh, I saw we spoke at this event, meet me for coffee, let's have a conversation. And that conversation turns into an opportunity of a lifetime. So I I really want to encourage you that if you have been applying multiple times and you haven't had the best success, that you now think about acquiring professional career services, even leverage your university. As alumni students, I believe most universities still give you access to their career centers. I know the universities that I went to, they still do this. So it doesn't always have to be monetary, but sometimes you mean you may need to pay for that expert advice to really get you to where you need to go to get a return on your investment. But well, overall, I just want to thank you for tuning into the Career Miss series that I've hosted here on YouTube. It has definitely uh, allowed me to connect with each and every one of you. If you've written comments or just shared words of advice, I did respond back to you. But from the bottom of my heart, thank you once again. Maybe I'll do Career Miss next year <laughs> as a part two. But um, once again, thank you for joining the Health Scholars channel. Thank you for tuning into Career Miss and have a merry Merry Christmas, spend time with family and friends. But when the new year comes, let's get to the money. Let's get to the healthcare bag. And so until next time, bye for now.